You know, it's weird to be kind of educated about history in an age where not a lot of people are. Because you know things like, hey, the Dark Ages were a period where no science was really accomplished because there was too much religion in the world and they kind of quashed it. And then you compare that to, you know, right now, where you feel maybe we're in a little bit of the Dark Ages already. And maybe if we weren't, we would have all sorts of cool advances, especially in medicine, where maybe we wouldn't have to worry about viruses and pandemic. And maybe we'd have nanobots just floating around in our bloodstream that could fix anything that's wrong with us. That is a future I would want to live in, but maybe not the future that Vin Diesel is living in in this week's movie, Bloodshot. So first things first off the top here, I really just want to say a big hello and I hope you are well to everyone who's watching this, wherever you may be all across the nation or the world. I know that the coronavirus has been spreading sporadically over the last few weeks and over the last week or so it has really taken a toll on the population, especially here in the U.S. It's in the news. So I hope that in some small way, uh, this next few minutes can help you have a little escapism from all of the bad news that's been going around lately. And it's somewhat ironic that this movie would be the movie that came out the week of the corona pandemic, one that talks about a super soldier who has been genetically devised to have nanobots inside him who repair anything that's wrong with him. Again, like I said in the intro, in a world where we are searching wholeheartedly for a cure or a vaccine to a virus that has been spreading around the world so quickly. But it wouldn't be much escapism if I just talked about corona the whole time, so let's talk about Bloodshot, and right from the get-go here, let's get the pleasantries out of the way. Bloodshot was directed by Dave Wilson, it was written by Jeff Waslow and Eric Heiserer. Jeff Waslow also gets the story by credit for this movie, and of course it is based on the comic book, originally written by Kevin Van Hook, Bob Layton, and Don Perlin. Bloodshot is starring a who's who of so close to being attractive, including Vin Diesel in the leading role, Isa Gonzalez as KT, Tallulah Riley as Gina Garrison, Lamorne Morris as the semi-superhero named Wilford Wiggins, Sam Hugan as Jimmy Dalton, and probably the most attractive person in the entire movie, Guy Pierce as Dr. Emil Harding. Now with saying that I have to have a little admission, I have had a crush on Guy Pierce for a very long time. All the way back to 2000's Memento, where that amazing movie blew my mind and its leading man, Guy Pierce, stole my heart. So Bloodshot, not an incredibly complicated movie. It's your typical run and gun superhero action hero kind of movie. Vin Diesel plays the title character, AKA Ray Garrison, an American soldier who may or may not have lost his life in a war overseas, Iraq, Afghanistan, it's kind of unclear. Uh, he's also an operator for maybe the CIA, maybe the SEALs, maybe the Rangers of some variety, possibly in Africa. There's a lot that's kind of question mark about what Ray's true history is. And that's because within the first 20 minutes of the film, we learn that all that Ray knows about his history may be a lie. But we see something play out in front of him. Uh, he is an operator in Kenya. He saves a hostage in very heroic fashion. He is basically a super soldier who's able to take everyone and anyone on. Uh, basically the same character you've seen Vin play before, only this time uh, he has a gun and not a nine second car. And he's truly joyful upon his return. He's met by his wife, played by Tallulah Riley, and they go off into the sunset to enjoy some much needed R&R. But sadly, after that first night, some operators who have learned where he is and who he is come and take him, and they take his wife, and uh, unfortunately she is murdered right in front of him, which of course sets him on a path to vengeance. And uh, when he awakes after that same incident, he finds that uh, he's in the hospital of Dr. Emil Harding, who explains to him that he in fact died just before now, and that Emil has brought him back to life using futuristic technology. We're then taken on a little trip to kind of explain how the technology got where it is now exactly. Uh, we find out that there are soldiers from, you know, Afghanistan, Iraq, and wherever the conflict is around the world who have helped Dr. Harding develop his super soldier kind of program, but one that replaces the normal organs, the normal limbs of soldiers with the uh, mechanical parts and robotic parts. And this all culminated in his experiment on Ray Garrison, which was to replace the entirety of his blood with a liquid nanobite kind of technology. And essentially, those nanobots or nanobites move around his body and repair things as uh, they get damaged. Although strangely, from the first moment I noticed, they didn't repair the scars that were on him. 
And scar tissue is essentially just, you know, where the body has healed itself incorrectly. And you would think that the nanobots would be able to go in and repair that, and so he would be pristine all the time, because, you know, later on we see them repairing all sorts of things, and they didn't. So, if you're looking for, you know, complexity, this is not the movie. But soon after he's awakened, uh, he learns that the man who killed his wife and who assumedly killed him has been located, and then he goes off on a trial of vengeance to try and take down everyone. Now, the runtime of this movie is only uh, an hour 49, so I can't go too much further than that without giving a lot away. I'm not sure how many of you would be up for seeing it. It is for a certain kind of fan, but of course we'll get to that. Just the same, I do want to have a little bit of a spoiler section where we can kind of discuss all the things that happen between there and the end of the movie. So, if you are going to check it out or if you're just not a fan of spoilers, go ahead down and skip down to the time down below because all the spoilers are coming at you right now. So the nanobot technology starts off a little slow. Uh, it's the doctor cutting his hand, and then we see, oh, this is how it works. Um, and it's strange to me because when he cuts his hand, it takes him, you know, uh, a while for them to heal the cut on his hand, which doesn't appear to be very deep. It's kind of superficial. Uh, and he puts his hand under the microscope, and we get to see it happen at a level which would be basically impossible in real life. But again, uh, some suspension of disbelief is required when we're about to see a Superman, uh, who doesn't have superpowers or from another planet, uh, act in real life. And I mentioned that he went off on a trial of vengeance in the first section. Well, here we go. Uh, the trial of vengeance is to chase down the man who killed his wife, uh, and he basically sets up the scenario in a tunnel where a truck just rams into the front car of a convoy, uh, preceded, by the way, the, of the nanobots in his body who are somehow attached to a network, reaching out and helping him in his brain, you know, in the neurons of his brain, locate information that exists on servers or from those servers out into the web, which isn't fully explained, and I'm not sure that they could be explained. But again, I'm going to go in with a little suspension of disbelief and just say, I want to see this guy get shot in the face and live to tell about it. I mean, listen, Wolverine is one of my favorite X-Men, and one of the things I loved about the X-Men movies and the Wolverine standalone movies is those moments where Wolverine gets shot and then, like, you know, takes care of the bad guys, and he does this thing where he, like, flexes, and, like, the bullet just pops out, right? And I was expecting one of those moments. That is not exactly what happened. Uh, instead, what you see is uh, some really gnarly injuries, including right at the end of that scene uh, where he is taking out his vengeance, a guy shoots him in the face, and half of his face explodes outward, but, but, remember, the blood is entirely made up of nanobots. So they basically cling on to each other and then bring the face back together and reform it. And I will say that, you know, I don't know what that would look like in real life. Uh, I don't know that that's possible in real life. But if it were to be possible, I would imagine it would look relatively like what we see in this movie. I think that, that for the, whatever it's worth, that measure of it was really well done. There are some things that require, you know, a little more suspension of disbelief. Like, he bleeds a droplet on the ground, and somehow those nanobots, like, fly up and rejoin the back of his head while he's fighting inside a car. Which seems like I don't really know how that would work, especially because later in the movie, he cuts himself into a jar and gives it uh, to Wilson Wiggins, or Wilfred Wiggins, I'm sorry, and they kind of just stay there. They don't follow him back. So eh, a little bit of a, like, incongruity there. But after he returns from that first mission, uh, he basically is told, like, all right, well, we're going to lay you down and recharge you because the nanobots need to be recharged. Uh, that was the key to this technology, is figuring out how to do that. Uh, and they lay down, and uh, they end up erasing his memory, and then he relives that same opening scenario again. And we see a different face on the face of the guy who kills his wife. And we learn subsequently that there he's being used as a weapon, basically, by the owner, by Dr. Uh, Harding, to go out and kill his personal enemies before they leak the technology that he's developed. And they found the perfect man in Ray Garrison because he's driven by vengeance and by rage. And whenever they change the face of the person who kills his wife and then, then you know, shoots him, it basically sends him down this path that inevitably he is going to go find this person. Uh, and, yeah, I knew something was amiss, obviously, because I saw some trailers, but also because the way that the people react when he kills them is very abnormal. Like, they didn't expect it. Like, who is this guy? Um, that Maybe they knew he was coming, but they didn't know, you know, what to expect about him. But as all things do, uh, I kind of fell apart on Dr. Harding, and uh, Ray becomes cognizant of the fact that he's being lied to. And uh, 
there is a bit of a weird love interest, but not love interest. I don't know how to explain it, but KT, uh, who is one of the other people in this little group of heroes, uh, it's made up of, uh, you know, a Navy SEAL who lost his legs but now has robotic legs, who turns out to be a bit of a psycho before the end of it, uh, a guy who is hit by an IED in uh, Afghanistan and loses his sight, and now he wears a jacket that has cameras all over it, and somehow his brain is processing all of that information and letting him see the world around him. Uh, this guy can also fire off these little... Uh, I don't know, helicopters, drones that will take video and he can see it inside his head. It's very weird. And I can't imagine that a human who's used to bifocal vision would somehow be able to take in that much information and do anything with it. But again, suspending some disbelief. Uh, and KT uh, was exposed to some sarin gas, which scorched her lungs. And now she breathes through a rebreather built into her chest. Uh, and it means that she is basically immune to all sorts of poisons and smoke and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but she isn't specifically a love interest, although there is a lot of tension between them. There isn't ever a moment where it turns into love, maybe because she realized he's obsessed with this wife of his who got killed and what girl wants to play second fiddle to a corpse. But maybe it's also because they tried to make her seem like, you know, she's a woman in her own right. She doesn't need Vin to save her and she doesn't, uh, you know, she wants to be a heroine. She doesn't want to be a damsel. Just the same, it was such a weird dichotomy between the two of them and I never quite figured out what they were trying to make us feel about it. And you know, for all the suspension of disbelief, I think that ba very basic human tenet uh, made it a little hard to kind of like get into that relationship. And in the end, I ended up not caring really about how they ended up together or not, uh, and whether or not, you know, the whole thing uh, succeeded just because I didn't really understand that relationship. But KT does play a role because uh, she helps uh, Wilfred get back into the offices of Dr. Harding and inevitably try to kidnap uh, Bloodshot or Ray Garrison, played by Vin Diesel, and uh, kind of set him free because she's tired of seeing him run these missions over and over and over again. He does get free. He finds his wife. Turns out he's been gone for five years and been basically running these missions for the last five years. And she's moved on and had a family. Uh, and there's this whole thing about, I always come home. And she gives him a line back, something to the effect of like, it's not that you always came home that upset me. It's that I never wanted you to leave home. Um, but of course, that doesn't work for the narrative that the good doctor is trying to, to work in. So, uh, you know, he we never hear about that until we hear it from her. But eventually, uh, other members of his team, not including KT, capture uh, Ray and they take him back to the um, and they take him back to the office. And when they do, uh, KT reports that she failed uh, to try and capture Wilfred. And I knew something fishy was up about that from that very first moment. And it turns out she has allied with him to try and, you know, uh, undo what the doctor has done. And uh, so they they need to get uh, Vin Diesel geared up one last time to go take out Wilfred so they can go public with this new technology. And uh, unfortunately, Wilfred's in the basement hacking away in the way that hackers do. Uh, what seems like he's building, I don't know, a very complicated web page ends up hacking an entire billion dollar computer system, taking it over, feeding it fake information, and then allowing Vin Diesel to be free and do whatever he wants to do. And what he wants to do is take his revenge because, you know, the doctor's not so wrong about that after all. And uh, he goes on a spree of just fighting anyone who wants to fight him, killing anyone that he can, including the two guys of his team who captured him. Uh, there is an epic CGI battle scene, and it reminded me a lot of a scene from The Matrix 2, where there were moments where they, like, freeze frame in a punch, and it's like, Aah. But they did the same thing in The Matrix 2, except for it looked very CGI there. And I think that you can see the progression of technology because it looked way better uh, in Bloodshot than it did way back then. And, uh, you know, it's still clearly CGI because, you know, Vin Diesel and this guy aren't tumbling off the side of a building, and we know that, logically. But it looked real enough that I, if I had been, you know dumber, I could have suspended disbelief even more and maybe thought that he was doing his own stunts off the side of a building. But eventually, uh, Vin sacrifices himself to try and take down the good doctor in and epic scene. Uh, one that involves him getting hit with two rocket propelled grenades. Uh, once he catches it and it blows up and we get this very, very interesting scene of like bits of him going, but because, you know, I guess his consciousness lives in the bots or something, he continues to move forward and just the bots start to put him back together as he moves forward, including his face and his hands and everything. Um, 
And we'd seen them previously heal bullet wounds. Like somebody was shooting at him and they were just like healing him up on the inside. And uh, he I feel like he got hit by a shotgun and he got hit by like some kind of explosive and he still survived it. It just like peeled back pieces and then put him back in. But this was truly like a big scene of like, like a big explosion come back together. This overclocking the nanobots, which don't know how much sense that makes because I can't imagine that they are traditional processors. Nanobots really work on quantum processing technology as it exists right now. But maybe that's getting too much into the science and not enough of the suspension of disbelief, right? Anyway, uh, so he catches up to the good doctor and the doctor shoots uh, at him one last time and he grabs it and then he grabs the doctor and he drops the round and they all blow up. And you think maybe that it's over, but uh, it's not. Because Vin wakes up one more time in a bed similar to the one he was in in the doctor's office. And I'll be honest, that they got me right there. They got me. I thought maybe that entire thing was a dream or maybe that uh, they were able to rebuild him and recapture him. And there was this kind of like nerdy, no backbone guy named Eric who worked for the doctor. And I was like, if they make Eric like the new bad guy, like he found the pieces and put him back together, I am going to lose it. But no, uh, it was a friendly put back together. It was uh, Wilfred who found him and healed him and brought him back and was very excited that he remembered everything and then told him, well, Katie's waiting for you outside. And he goes outside and they have this weird exchange and then nothing, no kiss, no like, oh, just they get in the car and they drive off into the sunset. It's very, very weird. And there is a funny moment right at the end. And, you know, if you are thinking like, well, as soon as he wakes up, I'm done. Maybe I could head out, uh, try to beat the crowd and, and uh, all of the, uh, the touching of the people that I don't want to touch. I would say stick around because there's this moment right before the credits roll where Wilfred in voiceover says something like, are we really driving into the sunset? And then he's like got a whole bunch of commentary about how this is, you know, basically a cheesy movie. And it is. It is a very cheesy movie. But it's it's an enjoyable movie as well. Everything Vin Diesel, I basically live and die by the Fast and the Furious rule, which I will get into in like the little like last little bit of the of the uh, review now. But you know, I just I will say that some of the scenes, some of the like the getting blown up and you know the fight scenes are 100% worth the price of admission. They've done something interesting here that I really haven't seen before, and I think that if for nothing else, uh, it's worth it for that. That's not a spoiler, and I'm probably gonna have to repeat that in just a few minutes. So, you know, let's bring everybody back in, uh, end the spoiler section, and get around to whether or not you should see this movie right now. Close to the spoilers, I, I had a couple thoughts and I threw them out there, but sorry, spoilers people, I'm gonna repeat them right now. A lot of the action scenes, a lot of the things that we saw in this movie are worth the price of admission alone. They've done some really interesting stuff and that I haven't seen before, with CGI, but also, and I don't want to say with the plot, but I guess a little bit with the plot, with like taking something that is just beyond possible and putting a really interesting threat on it. Like Wolverine, again, one of my favorite X-Men. And if I had a power, I like Wolverine actually, now that I think about it, because his power of healing also makes him immortal. And, you know, like he smokes cigars because his, it's just healing the cancer as it happens. And he drinks a lot because the cirrhosis doesn't bother him. But he also is basically immortal because he ages very slowly. And I already don't like this whole sentience thing as it is. Uh, being a nihilist and, and you know, the whole universe is an illusion thing that I, I have a belief in. I don't know that I would want to live forever in that. I say that because I have at times said, you know, being immortal is everything, right? It would give you a chance to learn everything. And it's, you know, it's a weird dichotomy. Which one do you want to choose? It's a, there's benefits to it and there's, there's costs. And I, I don't know. We're almost there with technology that it, within the next hundred years, we're going to have these little nanobots that'll be in your bloodstream and they will just help repair and upkeep the body. Just like we have, uh, you know, people who upkeep buildings. Your body is essentially a building that houses you and we have upkeep in buildings. We have upkeep in this building. People, God, you are lucky. Just being able to eat whatever you want and never work out and just always have a perfect body. It's going to be like the Garden of Eden. Glad I'm not going to live through it. Part of me is real sad I'm going to miss it. I think that Bloodshot is a lot like a, a movie I saw last year called Upgrade. In that movie, uh, basically a, a human had been kind of taken over by a computer. A computer had been like implanted in him and it gave him like a second consciousness and took over all of his functions. But he could actually just like release and let the computer have control of his body. And when he did that, he acted with the reaction time of a supercomputer 
Uh, and also the bad guys in that movie had like implants where they had like a gun implanted in their forearm uh, or knives implanted in their fingers and stuff. And I, I mean, it made me think of that because when I saw Upgrade, I was so blown away by it. I'm like, how did we not think about this before? Really hardcore Henry just being shot, the whole movie being shot from the first person. These are, are movies that like aren't fantastic. They're not really, really well done. It requires a lot of suspension of disbelief. Bloodshot's the same way. But they do something so unique and so interesting and such a twist on what you would expect and, and what you've seen before that it's worth the price of admission just for that alone. And I think Bloodshot is, is one of those. Like, is this movie for you? Let's ask ourselves the questions. Are you taking a kid? Absolutely do not see this. There is some really graphic violence. And I think they got away with it because in the end, he doesn't be, he's not hurt. Like seeing a guy just unload a machine gun into the chest of another person and yeah, he's still walking towards you. I guess that's okay. I don't know that I would want my kid to see that. I don't know that I would take my nephew to go see that. And then of course, the scenes with the grenade blowing him apart, the shotgun to the face. There's a lot of those type of scenes. And I just don't think that this is one of those movies where you're like, you know, they're being too overprotective. I can take my kid to see it. Do not do that. It is not for children. You yourself don't like blood and gore and you know kind of gunfire action you're not gonna like this it is basically a one long rolling gunfight scene interspersed with some dialogue uh and some weird dream sequences some your cup of tea it's probably not for you i mean honestly who is this for it is for fans of fast and furious it's for fans of the rock on cena excited about fast nine or whatever it was and are disappointed it's going to be the lady year this movie is for you and on top of that, it's probably a good movie for anyone who likes a good shoot 'em up even if you don't like cars, but you like shoot 'em ups This was probably going to be a good movie for you. Um, there is not so much of the, like, you know, Mission Impossible or or war movie, of, like, du ducking and diving. Like, there's not a lot of defense. Basically, it's an NBA game. Not a lot of defense, a lot of offense. Just, like, take the shots, and then let's see what you can do with it. So that generally, I don't like to see these movies early in their runs because the theaters tend to be full of people who just want to talk through it or or yell. The theater it was pretty empty. It was a Saturday morning, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. But also, theaters are going to run pretty empty in the next few weeks. So it might be a good time to run out and see Bloodshot if this is a movie that you would like. Uh, I will give it a 100% worth it if you're just looking for some entertainment to get you out of the mindset of how crappy things are right now and how you wish you could be anywhere else. Take a, an hour and a half and go see Bloodshot. You'll get a little time away from everyone, get a little popcorn, get a soda, and get some time in the dark just to forget about the world around you and live in the world where Vin Diesel is basically Superman and can punch stone walls and beat them to death, I guess that for that escapism uh and for that feeling of like the fast and the furious i had a great time watching this movie i think you will have a great time watching this movie so for all of those reasons it is worth it to go check it out so make sure you do before bloodshot is out of theaters we have yet another episode of the everyman movie review in the books up here as per usual, I would like to send out a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. I could not do all of the things that I am doing without all of the support that you guys provide. Number one, of course, is the moral support, sending me messages, uh, whether it is on Patreon or on Facebook, on Instagram, just saying, hey, I'm subscribed, I'm watching, I love that thing you did. I Secret rap record, the one that I recorded right at home, and I only sent to my patrons on Patreon. People who sent me messages about that really encouraged me to say, you know what, let's try that again. Let's see how that works out. It's terrible, but they like everything I do. And if you like everything I do, or even just some of it, it's worth it to you to spend only a dollar a month to get all the behind the scenes, all the unreleased stuff. I'm just starting on some writing projects. I'm going to be uploading my first versions to them this week. So make sure that if this interests you, that you go check out patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Robert and Cheek and throw me a little support, whether it's moral support in the form of a message or monetary support. You get access to all of that behind the scenes stuff for as little as a dollar a month. So you really can't beat the value for the price. You can follow me on social media for free. I'm available at all your social networks at Robert and Cheek. That's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Tumblr, Facebook, everywhere.
at Robert N. Cheek is the link. Make sure you check it out. Give me a follow. That's where you're going to get to stay up to date on everything that I'm working on and some of my just random funny things. My Instagram story is a must see. People check it out every single morning because I update it on my way to work and they just want to see what memes I'm posting, what craziness has been going on for the last 24 hours. So follow me on Instagram at Robert N. Cheek to get access to that. RobertNCheek.com. I built it on a service that doesn't exist anymore. So now I'm teaching myself Dreamweaver because I have time to do stuff like that. And I'm going to rebuild the site from scratch. So apologies if you try to check out the website and it's not available. It is down for a little while. If you know Dreamweaver and you, you know, like to help me out, shoot me a message on any of those social media platforms. But otherwise, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be happy to announce a brand new RobertNCheek.com and make sure you keep eyes out for that. If you are watching the review on YouTube, thank you for joining me. Please take a little time, send me a comment down below, hit the like button, and if you really like the video and you want to be notified whenever new videos come out, subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell. It'll send you an email and a message every time I post a new video, not just the Everyman Movie Reviews, but all of the videos that I work on. You'll be able to know first that something new is available. Listen on anchor.fm for the podcast version. Thank you for joining us again. Make sure you check out anchor.fm forward slash everyman movie review forward slash message and that'll allow you to send me whether it's a text message or a voicemail message and I get all of them and if you give me permission you have to give me direct permission I'll put that right on the show. Back to other recordings that no one on YouTube gets to see. So if you're missing out on one or the other maybe it's time to check out the opposite and see what everybody else is seeing. Can enough of me because huh why would you you can check me out every single tuesday my buddy Corey and i do a brand new episode of the od anthem podcast you can find that at odanthem.com on youtube at youtube.com forward slash od anthem and we record it live on facebook twitter and on youtube so make sure you follow that channel T H E A N T H E M. You'll be notified when we go live, and then you can come out and join us for the show. Uh, it's just another way that you can see more of me. You can find my Amazon author's page. That's where all the books are available. I'm working on something new. Uh, I'm actually working on audiobooks, so I'm hoping that we'll have something up on Audible by the end of the year. So a lot of exciting stuff happening, and you're not going to want to miss out on any of it. Thanks for joining me for this video. I'm looking forward to bringing you another video. Every single Thursday, you'll get a brand new video from me with another one in between, whether it's Saturday or Sunday or Monday. The next time, please stay safe out there, everyone. Have a great week.